Hi. Just uh, there you go. So, hello, welcome to uh, to Rev's Restoration. Thanks very much indeed for Adam for doing it. This is a pre-recorded piece that we did earlier on in the week, but uh, suitably socially, di socially distanced, we popped out to come and see um, a really good friend of ours, Jack Taylor. Um, Jack's been doing stuff with the charity, what, for three or four years now? 2015, I think. Oh, wow, so for five years we've been doing stuff. Um, and we'll come on a little bit to sort of, you know, sort of Jack's journey, but I've been absolutely dying to come and see a piece of work that he's been talking about for a long time, and it's the first opportunity that I've had to see it in person, which is really cool. Um, uh, amazing workshop, hidden location, um, and there's all sorts of amazing and cool stuff in here, but um, Jack, what's standing behind us? Um, time well spent. It is time well spent, so here it is. This thing here is, is Jack's truck. So originally, mate, um, what's, uh, what's it based on originally? It started like the cap is from Mark III Hilux. Um, well, it's the second one I've done. The truck came in to the garage to put it through the head gasket on the first super engine. And then everything got really, really out of hand. And we ended up there. That's not out of hand, so there's a bit of a Toyota theme going on. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Toyota so, stuff. so your top shelf, your top deck is one of those two quickly? Uh, that's a Sleeper Supra. Um, I think it's a P-Class. On the left, yeah. It's a posh one, and that's a Mark III Supra on your right there. The loom and everything came out of that car, the engine, not the gearbox. Came out of that car to go in this, so this is running on the super loom. At the so, so this thing, no longer Hilux engine, it's running, so that's a straight six, three litre? Yeah, straight six, three litre, turbo. single turbo. Um, but obviously with, obviously with some extra special bits which are attached to it now, so, yeah. I mean, this is overnight parts from Japan, yeah? No, these came from the States. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not overnight parts from Japan. Fantastic. Um, these are from the States, and they were a joy. To get hold of. Yeah, an absolute nightmare, mate. I can I can read into that. This bit looks like something I can recognise. Yeah, that's Mark III Hilux. So yeah. So that's that's Mark III Hilux. And if we go for a bit of a wander around here, I mean this, but I mean this is this is almost sort of trophy truck kind of dimensions. That's, 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 that's what it's set for. Um, undecided on the suspension just yet because it's on mock-up shocks. Um, okay. I'm thinking probably 12 inches of suspension on the travel in the front yeah. and about 16 in the rear, but I don't know what that translates to in the rear when you take all your trig into account. So, um, well, and just the amount of fabrication that's gone into this is, is absolutely mind-blowing, but when did, you, when did you start this? Was it earlier this year? No, 2012. So 2012, and then for you, your injury came yeah. in 2014. Yeah, yeah. So your trade when you were in the Royal Air Force was? Uh, aircraft engineer. Heavy. So engines, airframes. Engines, airframes. And what, what kind of aircraft, mate? Uh, firstly, I worked on the C-17s. Yeah. Then I went back for training and came back out and ended up in the real world on um, uh, Chinooks. Fantastic. So the big twin Chinook engines up at the back, that's, that's really your thing. Yeah, yeah. All of the power in the world. Outruns an Apache on this way back from uh, it the, does. Uh, back from the incident with the Merc. And that gives you fabrication skills uh, to allow you to attempt a thing like this. So on, let's get Jones around here, just so we can see this. And if she's, a bit, she's a bit untidy. Well, I can see there's obviously there's a yeah. bit of wiring going on here, which looks utterly nightmarish. But that the, all of this here, so everything, everything, yeah, is fabricated from front to rear. So yeah. actually, it goes underneath this. This is, is really sort of yeah. There's the cage comes through, so it goes straight through. From the bed goes up, you've got a pillar that follows it, and we take a little part on. There we go, so I'll do this side. Yeah, no worries. So, um, Jack has fabricated every bit of, of the shell of this, so everything which gives it structural rigidity, but it also gives it this incredible amount of suspension travel front and rear, all of which has to be designed in. So what you're looking at is, is UK spec Mark III Hilux that has become now a you know, kind of trophy truck spec. It's, it's um, you know, similar, but um, uh, it's an amazing piece of kit. But the, the thing that amazes me for this is um, 
the amount of time, so it's eight years in order to get to this point. And obviously, it was a bit of fun for you originally when you... Yeah, it was just, a, when, when I started, it was just, cylinder head's gone. You've got nothing much to do in your spare time, build a truck. And then, 2014, yeah. traumatic brain injury, so... Yeah. And it changes the way in which you think and in which you perceive things and, uh, and all sorts of stuff that, that, yeah. that I know we've done loads of work with when you were here, but, but this for you has been therapy, hasn't it? Yeah, totally. It's, I don't know, it's not, it's not really, it's not a car yeah. and it's not, it's not something I have to complete. It's just an ongoing... Just yeah, and it's about the journey, not the destination as well. Just, Peace. Um, yeah. And it's clear just how much you love it. Um, and it's, I, I always love seeing bits and pieces on it. So for me, it's really special to come and see it for the first time. Also, because I know just how agonizing it's been and how many bits you've done and then redone because it hasn't been, oh, it hasn't no, been no. how you wanted it or you've had a drama and all the rest of it. And a lot of that comes down to yeah, I've had, I've built, headspace. I've built cages. I think it's the third one that's on it. And, um, I just, when I built them, I was just building the cages to not be alone with my own thoughts. Wow. So I'd gone back to them and then torn them off again. I knew when I was doing it, I wasn't happy. But it was yeah. just, it, it got me away. I mean, and, uh, and of course you, well, I think you were in a military quarter as well, so yeah. a lot of it happened in your dwelling. Mo of most of it. Mo most near of enough, all of you can see, happened on an <laughs> uneven drive that had three dimensions of slant that was slightly smaller than the truck. And the, the thing that always amazes us about Jack is just what an incredible engineer and fabricator and all of the rest of it still underneath. Um, but, uh, but you're very much just sort of managing your own recovery and it's yeah. a day by day thing, like good days and bad days. Yeah, and yeah. I wasn't down here yesterday because I just couldn't do it. Um, no. You know, you can't hit something and expect to complete it with, with an injury. You, you, got, you have to take every day at a time. Go on, take this off. Let's, yeah. have, let's, let's have a look at what's underneath, because this... Just watch it. Hang on. There you go. So this is the thing that amazes me, and, and James, who's, who's uh, filming for us there carefully, um, asked the not unreasonable question about, where do you get all of this stuff from? But this is all your design all from your head. Yeah, yeah, um, and there's just these lovely bits of fabrication, like that sort of armoured, self-guardy yeah. kind of stand for the front of the uh, for the front of the cassette, the cooling cassette on the front. It's uh, it just it just happens, you know. Just start looking at the shapes and see what shapes fill the gaps, and you end up with shapes that fit together filling gaps, I guess. Which is really lovely. And then just these beautiful little bits of engineering. So actually, if James just spins around behind him, you'll see there's a little um, metal. Uh, there's a little metal scoop there on the top of the bonnet, if you have a look. And the reason why that's there is because there's this lovely little underbonnet gauge, which is just in the bottom of the driver's line of sight, basically, as it, as it sits, rather than inside the dashboard. So it's just been flared out in order to be able to do it. And then there's loads of those little touches underneath. But that's a proper Toyota engine, and that was important to you, wasn't yeah, it? it? Was, not it not was. to drop an LS or something in here, but... It was. It's... Um... In the first truck I had, I had a smash on the M5. Yeah. And that truck was, I think it was the fact it was a Hilux was the only reason I didn't get smashed up properly because it took out 26 grand of Armco. And um, I just wow. had an affinity with the Toyota. 26 grand of Armco is normally only possible at the Nürburgring, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that from that one. Anyway, look, so as we come around this side, there's, there's one other bit I kind of wanted to ask about. So, um, uh, you actually worked with Jimmy DeVille, and I think I did, yeah. Jimmy's doing a piece. So what program was that on? That was on Goblin, Goblin Works Gary. Fantastic. And you, you were up there spanning with Manchester was where it was yeah, going, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? That neck of the woods, which is really cool. Um, you've got a, you have one of my favourite quotes ever, which I can't repeat right now, but was it at was it Goodwood in Martin Ovington's Bentley when you came oh, in yeah. on the end of the lap? And the Spitfire had come into land there, right? that, yeah. as you, you broadsided round the corner underneath. And Jack Spannard on um, Martin Ovington's Le Mans Classic winning Bentley yeah, blower yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the Le Mans Classic. And that was a huge thing. It was a really big thing in terms of a recovery journey to yeah, the abroad and all of the rest of it. It and, was, it was. And it's also in terms of noise, complexity, pressure, all of the rest of it at the top end. But then you have this amazing carrot of a 1929 blower bending. Yeah, yeah. At the time, I had issues with um, 
for two. Yes. And uh, it was it was very very surreal. Just kipping in the back of this Bentley. <laughs> just <laughs> kipping in the back of it in the in the pits. Just. And so, absolutely. So the thing with Park Up, and if anybody's ever been to the Le Mans Classic, uh, they're all put in different sort of age groups, these, uh, these uh, plateaus of, of different age groups. And there's these lines of bent leaves, um, all absolutely beautiful, these pre-war jobs. And one of them's got this snoring Jack Taylor, just literally on the bench seat in the back of it, um, uh, getting his head down and just, just sort of filling it in. But there's a sticker on the side of here, which, um, which I did just want to talk about quickly. So... There's a poppy there and a Mission Motorsport sticker, which is from Race of Remembrance. And we have just announced Race of Remembrance is uh, probably the most likely event in British motorsport to happen this year. Um, and you came along and did it with us a couple of years ago. Uh, I did. The first, time. the first car I did it, touch sorry, first year I did it was the year I did through Chris Harris's car. Uh, that from Top Gear, absolutely. So whenever, yeah. whenever that was. And that was the first generation poppy car. It was, yeah. Oh, I feel lovely. So, first ever Mark IV um, uh, MX-5 build, um, oh. done by James Webley, who went on to be, um, uh, to be an engineering special vehicle operations. He did, he did. Um, and uh, Jack is one of the guys who was spannering on that, on that car. Race Remembrance is pretty special, isn't it? It's, it's, it's near enough one of the only things I look forward to every year, when I know it's coming. The and people, it, the place. And it never used to be that way for remembrance for, for me as well. It used to be something that I'd sort of stuff. I'd, I'd do the ceremonies, but yeah, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a day you look forward to, would it? No, no, not at all. But it, race remembrance kind of turns that on its head a little bit, doesn't it? And it does totally. If you're out, you're with people who are also suffering, and you're all in the same boat, and you know you don't you you, you can freely let your emotions go, and there's absolute zero judgment, and there's only support there. Um, and we make that sort of thing possible by, uh, by kind of living that journey a little bit ourselves, to be perfectly honest, but also because we've got incredible occupational therapy support and an incredibly professional staff. But also, bodies of people, of the lads who then help each other, and when you go back in subsequent years, um, you know what it's like for that first time for somebody who's coming along, and it just gives you the ability to support them. But Jack came up with a beautiful idea. Um, every year we have prizes for Race of Remembrance, uh, which go to the people who win the different classes within within the race. Uh, by far the most popular thing that we ever did was um, 18 pounder shells, so genuine First World War brass brass cases, um, and they went down incredibly well. Um, but the point that Jack made is that we never had a race of remembrance trophy, a proper ROR trophy, which was handed on from winner to winner, the heroes trophy, um, uh, from year to year. So. Um, asked if there was something you could do about it and that was a good few months ago and really excited to be able to um, should we go over and have a look and if you can introduce us that would be brilliant um, this is perseverance the poppy and so this is carrying on that wonderful sort of poppy design obviously race of remembrance is most famously a remembrance service with a 12 hour endurance motor race attached to it it's it's not the other way around and Jack, you built this yourself completely I from did. parts. I did, yeah. And, you know, so there's no artistic direction or anything that came from us. This is from the head of Jack Taylor. And I know that, again, there was lots of experimentation and work that went into it. You went backwards and forwards a few times. I did. What are these different, what are these different pieces? Uh, the woods, I can't for the life of me remember. I'm sure someone will yes, tell us what it is. But um, it came from the uh, tree surgeon just up the up the way from us. And it's all proper ancient wood, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's is. local, it's local to, um, to the workshop. Uh, the chain, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, I pulled this out the ground around the corner and I believe it's the old plough horse chains that used to go around there, um, that bit. And the thing actually, the thing actually stands on its own chain. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got these wonderful individual sorts of petals with this incredible and Sort of wonderful, wonderful piece at the top. Now, this thing will be what people are racing in order to win at, at, at Race of Remembrance and the ability to have this, uh, to be able to put it on display and to have it for themselves for a year and it will get handed on from person to person um, as they go down. And we, we couldn't think of anything more appropriate, really, than uh, something that's, that's sort of uh, come from the mind and the workshop and the hands of, you know, uh, a guy like yourself, Jack. So... We're unbelievably privileged to be able to show it off. Um, uh, 
two two weeks into November, this is uh, this is going to be uh, going home with somebody uh, for them to have custody of for the year, and then it will be handed on to the next person in the next race of remembrance. Um, look but, after it. <laughs> absolutely, too right. Look after it. And the next coming piece is how that sort of uh, the box bit will work, and we've got some some coming sort of military themed ideas I think that will go with that too. Um, Thank you so much for showing us. Uh, no, no, no problem. Anytime, mate. Always welcome. Anytime. That's insanely cool. Um, um, and when that rolls out, that's going to be going to be something really special. Hopefully, and I feel I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot saying it. If the events going forward, regards to current issues and stuff, hopefully she'll be doing sleep cross Saturday if I can get her there. And then um, let me. Just be very cool. So we'll have to kind of figure out how all of that works. For everybody watching Red's Restoration, we're hugely grateful for the support to Mission Motorsport. Uh, so for Adam and the team who pulls it all together, Jimmy, everybody who's contributing, um, who's contributing content over the course of the weekend, keep tuning into stuff. You can use that search bar on the left-hand side uh, if you're on a desktop, or just search in the group if you're on your phone, and you can find all sorts of incredible content. Um, uh, but for us at the Forces Motorsport Charity, uh, and on behalf of uh, Adam and the team who put together the restoration event, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Jack. Anytime, mate. Anytime. Cheers.